you know this would be the night the busboy had the flu. You waiting for Chris? Yeah, the, the flu's really going around. How come you're hanging around? Trouble is, not enough people stay home when they have the flu. Is Chris coming back or not? Will you leave me alone, please? Can you just do your dishes and leave me alone? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Right here, Chris. Thanks for lying for me in there. Ada? If you wait till the bus comes, I'll drive you home. Thanks, Stephen. I think I'll walk. I need the fresh air. Chris, she didn't lie for you. She just didn't press charges. That's right, I forgot. You're the one who did the lying. Chris, they were just trying to help you. Before, it was always Lee who helped me, guided me through the obstacle courses, ran interference for me. Well, how far does that bus go? Boston, New York, on through to Los Angeles. Non-stop to the promised land, huh? I'll send you your clothes as soon as you're settled. <sighs> Sandy, you can give my law books to some poor scholarship slob. Chris. Let's face it, I would have made a lousy lawyer anyway. Don't say that. Besides, the Bar Association frowns on lawyers who attempt to commit murder, even if it is hushed up. Now, reminded of them, don't you think, Stephen? A bit. I would thank you for that bus ticket, but I'd be lying. And we've had enough of that for one night. Well, Chris, let's just say that... Let's just say nothing, Stephen. Let's just say that right now I feel a bit too bitter to be grateful. But it's a long way to the Blue Pacific. Maybe somewhere around Kansas, I'll breathe a word of thanks in your direction. Settle for a postcard once in a while. You know, I'm not sorry, Stephen. I'm not sorry that I tried to execute Lee, only that I failed. I'm not going to give you any corridor advice, Chris. Well, I can thank you for that. It's your hang-up. Even if you had a hundred willing helpers, you'd have to climb down by yourself. But I've always been afraid of heights. Well, it's almost time. You want to walk him outside? The bus stops right in front of you. Stephen, you couldn't conjure up a spare ticket, could you? Only if Sandy wanted it. No, not yet, Chris. I'm not afraid of Lee anymore. Anyway, one of these days you'll find me camping on your doorstep. Sure. Let's go. Stephen, I hope I didn't smear you too much with my dirt. And I think they won't wash off. Well, don't take any wooden clients. Chris. What are you going to do in California? Well, haven't you heard? They dig the weird, the offbeat, the way out. What could be more way out than a blind piano player who doesn't wear dark glasses? There's the bus on. Chris. Sandy, I don't want to leave. I don't want to tuck my cane between my legs and leave you alone with that murdering brother of mine. I know. But you can't stay. He would sit on you so hard you couldn't get up. And that goes double for you. We both know that. Well, 
Well, sis, I hope Rodney's worth it. I can't help it. Will you write me where you are? Sure. As soon as I know where that is. Reservations for you at the end. Ain't room waiting for you. We'll talk in the morning. If it ever comes. It always comes, Sandy. Luggage? Oh, well, I, I, I didn't have time to pack. I didn't know I was coming here. Lady, have to have luggage to check in? Oh, no, I was just asking. Why don't you get Mrs. Weber's room key for her? Rod. Life goes on, Sandy. Death, taxes, and auto repairs. My father lives here. I came by to pick up his car. Okay, hey, Sandy, now you have no luggage and you have no husband. What are you doing here? Are you, you were at the garage. Did you hear the shot? No, I, uh, I was at Ada Jack's. I, I can't go back to Lee. He knows that I'm the one that helped Chris get away from him, so Mr. Cord suggested I spend the night here. Well, for once, Mr. Cord had the right idea. Yeah, but he didn't tell me how I was going to make it through the night alone, sitting up there staring at four walls. Hey, may I make a suggestion? Wish you would. Force yourself. Now, if Lee comes looking for you again, you're going to be glad they built this old barn with big, strong doors. Well, thanks a lot, but right now I'm going out. Why? Well, if it's any of your business, I need a, um, a toothbrush. Sandy, wait a minute. Now, do you have any idea what time it is? You'd have to walk clear across town to find an all-night drugstore. I can't let you run that risk. Well, then will you do something for me? Well, of course. Or should I say what? Will you, uh, stay with me? I should have said what? Rod, I'm not cooking up anything. I just don't want to be alone. Not tonight. We can sit in the lobby. And if your husband finds us sitting in the lobby? Is it Lee you're afraid of, or is it me? The man is your husband, Sandy. Well, I... I can't argue that, can I? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Excuse me, but, uh... Do you know who Lee Weber is? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Cord told me not to let him up to Mrs. Weber's room. Now, did you hear that, Sandy? You go up to your room and you stay there. If you need anything, phone down. This nice man will take care of it. He'll send somebody out for it. Thanks a lot. You're really putting yourself out for me, aren't you? There's just one other thing, Mr. Harrington. If the police can't get here too quickly, well, you can't keep a man from his wife. You know what I mean? You mean you can? Maybe I can. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I'll give you the names of a couple of attorneys that can help you. And you won't do it. Divorce? As soon as possible. Have you talked to Lee about it? I don't want to talk to him about anything. I just want out. Do you have any idea that's what you want? No, I haven't seen him since the other night. I thought maybe you could talk to him for me. Well, what should I do, Sandy? Use your house key to let myself in when I deliver the message? Mr. Cord, I know how you must feel being shot at and everything, but I didn't have anything to do with that. I know. Well, if you've made up your mind, I'll give you the names of a couple of attorneys that can help you. You won't do it. There just aren't enough hours in the day. 
You're going to need some advice, someone that can think things through without being emotionally involved. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. All I want is a little piece of paper that says I'm no longer married to Lee Weber. Either one of these men can handle everything for you. And you won't do it? No. Well, it figures. All my life I've been trying to put square pegs into round holes. Look, Sandy. Oh, no need to apologize, Mr. Cord. I uh, can't say that I blame you for wanting to wash your hands and walk away. I know the feeling, but thank you for your time. Just a moment. Yes? Your wife is here, Mr. Cord. I'll be right out. Look, Sandy, I can take this to court for you. But where will it end? I didn't intend to step in and take over the other night. I just reacted to a situation. Now, as an attorney, I can't take you as a client if it means building up some kind of false confidence in you that says I can turn to Stephen for anything. It would only set you up for another fall. Well, I think it's a little more than that, isn't it, Mr. Cord? I think you're just sick and tired of anyone by the name of Weber. Well, everyone has been telling me since I was 12 years old what a big girl I am. So I guess I can take care of myself. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. Oh, no problem. I just stopped in to get the names for a few lawyers. I understand you're moving into Martin Payton's house. Yes, today. Mm. Well, you must be very excited. I know we'll both enjoy it. Well, I'm making a move myself. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm making a move. Even though it isn't really moving anywhere, is it, Mr. Court? Well, that will depend on you, Sandy. Yeah, well, thank you. I sure appreciate your going over there with me. I wouldn't have the nerve to go back to that house alone. I guess it hasn't exactly been a honeymoon cottage. Boy, these things are heavy. Hey, how am I going to get the rest of my things? I left some summer clothes. Well, don't push your luck. Well, here we are, the Peyton Place Plaza. Oh, it's very nice. Well, it'll do for a few days, anyway. I really appreciate your putting me up, Ada. I didn't know which way to turn. Look, Sandy, I'm glad to help you out. But it's gonna cost you something. You're gonna have to listen to a little straight talk. Okay, Ada, what is it? If I were you, I'd get as much space between me and Lee Weber as I could. Yeah, sure, Ada. I mean it, honey. That guy doesn't give up. As long as you're around, he's going to give you a bad time. Well, I'm sure you're right, but I can't leave, not just yet. It's rod, isn't it? Walking out on Lee is one thing, but sticking around because of rod, you've got to be kidding. Can't help it, Ada. Look, Sandy. Stay away from him. Why risk your neck? And his? For nothing. Now, who can that be this early? I tell you to go around front where the bar is, but this whole place is off limits to you. Back, front, and middle. I just want to talk to my wife, Ada. All of you? Oh, come on, Ada. She doesn't want to talk to you. Well, do you mind letting her tell me that? I'm not your wife anymore. Since when? I filed for divorce this morning. You what? You heard me. Come on, Lee, let's cut out. That's the idea. Get out. Listen, baby, just because you filed, that doesn't mean anything. You're still my wife. You stay away from me, Lee. I told the lawyer all about you, how you like to push me around. And if you start anything, you're going to be very sorry. I'm starting anything. Hey, fellas, did I do anything, huh? I just stopped by to talk to my wife, right? So you talk to her. Now get out. All right, Ada. Don't forget, Mrs. Weber. It takes a year to get a divorce in this state, at least before it's final. Who can tell you might even change your mind? Fat chance. A lot can happen in a year. 
Well, one thing that won't is you coming around here. You so much as show your face around here and I'll call the cops, understand? Oh, Ada, you got me all shook up. Guys like a time bomb. You still sure you want to stick around for the explosion? I'm staying. Each to his own. Come in. Hello. Hi. I, uh... I went to an attorney. He filed divorce papers for me. I'm free now, Rod. You mean a year from now? No, I mean I'm free now. Technically. Well, I suppose you'll be leaving town. No. It's none of my business. Well, look, Rod, I know what you mean, but... Well, when I married Lee, I always did what he wanted me to do. Mostly because I was afraid of it. But now I'm going to be able to do what I want to do. Well, I guess that means something or other. Uh, it means a lot to me. Okay, Sandy. What are you afraid of, Rod? Lee? Well, he's... He's awfully big and strong. And you're afraid of him? I didn't say that. Well, what did you say? I said I'm awfully busy, Sandy. You'll have to excuse me. Well, you said it like a little gentleman. Well, that, me, gently reared. Well, I wasn't. Look, Rod, you don't understand. If it weren't for you, I would be on the next bus out of here going anywhere and nowhere. You know, uh, anywhere and nowhere, there are two little towns out west. Look, I'm sorry, but I can't help it. I don't know what you want me to say to you, Sandy. Well, you could say you're flattered. I am flattered. I mean it. That's as far as it goes. Well, it's a beginning. Well, let's leave it right there, all right? I guess I should feel embarrassed. Why, you're a very... Attractive. You know it. Yes, but I throw myself at you and you duck like some kind of a reflex or something. Where did you learn to do that? In high school when all the girls were after Golden Boy? That's what Lee calls me, you know. Golden Boy. Don't you like it? Because I mean it differently than Lee does. It sounds the same. Because you're afraid. Well, back to that, huh? Right where we started. Sandy. I don't want any commitments. It's that simple. Now, I left my grandfather's house because I don't want him involved in my life anymore. I don't work with my father at the mill because I don't want to be involved with him either. I want to be free. I don't want to be committed to anybody. That's all I want. Well? Well? Well, what's the problem uh, between you and me? If, if you and I were to start seeing each other, we would, we would owe each other a responsibility. Well, I'm fresh out of responsibility. Yeah, I don't want to be tied down to anyone. Well, I'll buy that. No, don't buy it. It's a bad deal for you. Rod, I, I understand what you mean. No strings, right? But don't try to sell me on the idea that it would be a bad deal for me. I shouldn't have to try and sell you. It should be obvious. Well, let me judge that. Look, I understand what you mean, and I won't demand anything from you, ever. I promise you that. My entire life has been nothing but one bad deal after another. No, it, it won't work. It can't work. Only if you don't want it to. Mr. Harrington, don't you understand? Could you, uh, smile at me or something so I don't feel so embarrassed? Good, thanks. Well, I won't bother you anymore. The rest is up to you.
you thinking? Nothing special. Something. I'm thinking about how little... how little people really know about each other, really know. Meaning us? No meaning everybody but us. You take the... those fishermen out there in their boat to my grandfather and his... his mansion. They're all in their... their, their own little groove. Well, that's what makes the world go round, I guess. I guess. That's not really why you're unhappy, is it, Rock? Who says I'm unhappy? Well, you're not exactly tap dancing in the street. <gasps> hey, what I said before still goes. No strings. Sure. some girl breathing down his neck all the time, and I don't intend to breathe down yours. A thousand thanks. I don't get it. Sandra Weber, you're just like every other girl I've ever known. Thanks? In one important respect. You're a girl. Brilliant deduction. And therefore, you're entitled to certain needs, certain hopes. You want to feel that a, that a man is looking out for you, that you know you're protected, that there's a special place in his in his life reserved for you. And that's only natural. Here's your coffee, Rod. Thank you, Charlie. I want you to look at me. I'm not Allison. And I have news for you, Mr. Harrington. I don't want to be put up on a pedestal because I'm too happy to be out of the mud. And as for those guys who put girls up on pedestals, well, nine times out of ten, it's to get them out of the way so they don't have to treat them like a human being. So don't do me any favors. And don't give me that routine about wants and needs. And don't call me Sandra. Hey, you know, Sandra, you're really something. Well, I'll bet you say that to all the girls. Mm-mm. Rod, why did you come looking for me? Well, I felt like it. No. I mean, why especially now? Why not? Liar. You don't owe me anything. Here's to you, Sandra Weber. My top dresser drawer, honey. Help yourself. I got myself a job you just wouldn't believe. I fell into something real wild, Sandy. I'm going to be Mr. Martin Payne's chauffeur. How about that, huh? No more jockeying around a gas pump or hustling a day's work on some stinking mackerel tub. All I got to do now is just drive that big, beautiful car around and put everybody down. What a scene, huh? How come he hired you? Well, the old man likes me. Well, you could at least say congratulations. Congratulations. 